have any questions? <clears throat> All right, Leader Amo. No question, Mr. Chairman. Legislator Luan. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Legislator Sutherland. No, thank you. Legislator Tortell. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Legislator Tui. Yes, Chairman. Um, Lawrence broke up a little bit there. Lawrence, can you just say how much that number is for the weekly testing? I wasn't sure if you said we're going to get that uh, reimbursed. Or... The, the question right now is we don't know who's paying for it. Um, the initial response from the Department of Health was that the facilities were going to be responsible to pay for it. That would have cost us about $60,000 $60, a week. Okay. That's what um, we missed. Yeah. So it's still up in the air as to who's responsible for who's going to pay for it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Chairman Gresham. No questions. Thank you, Chairman. Leader Benelli. Any other legislators? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Not at this time, but thank you. Thank you. Any other legislators? All right. Lawrence, so um, the federal guidelines are weekly tests for all residents and staff, okay? And we're going to do that twice. The state, the state made their, the state can make their own guidelines, and they've decided right. to do twice a week for employees. All right, that's fine. And then, we, have tested, we have tested every resident in the building, just so you know. All right, and I know right from the get go, we're taking uh, every resident's temperature twice a day. All right. Still monitoring temperatures. Right. If we if we have a resident that um, still monitoring temperatures of both staff and residents, if a resident displays any symptoms, they will be retested as necessary. Okay. Uh, the second guideline from the feds was all residents and staff to wear masks. Are we doing that? Are the residents all wearing masks? The residents are not all wearing. They all can't wear masks based on their breathing capabilities. I'm just going by the Fed guidelines, that's all. And then all staff have adequate PPE? Yes. You need any more equipment? No, we're good right now. All right. And we still don't have any outside visitors there? Correct, no visitors, yeah. Right. So the federal guidelines say no outside visitors until there's no new cases for 28 days. So are we keeping track of those days? Yes, yeah, we, we, we report daily to the New York State Department of Health. Anytime there's a new uh, case, it gets reported. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. All right, so anybody else have any other questions? All right, so we'll go to item number two, Chairman Gresher, a resolution of the Orange County Legislature in support of New York State Senate Bill number 7922 and Assembly Bill number 10157, an act in relation to directing the study of health and environmental impacts from implementation of 5G and future generation wireless network system technology and small cell distribution antenna system in New York State. Do I have a motion? So move. We need a motion for a resolution. Second. <clears throat> so move. We got, we got him. Lou Hunt, second. Tell. All right, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. All I'm asking here is for us to um, support the resolutions in the New York State Senate, uh, Senate Bill 7922 and Assembly Bill 10157, uh, an act in relation to directing the study of health and environmental impacts from implementation of 5G and future generation wireless network technology and small scale distribution and tennis system in New York State. Um, all we're asking here is to, is to study the environmental impacts because we don't know the environmental impacts. Um, Chairman of Rules, Tom Fagione, asked me to do my homework. And it's tough to do my homework on this because really the FCC and the FDA not done their research on this issue. Um, you know, it could be a serious issue. There's two schools of thought. Uh, I 
watched the Fox News article last night. And 5G is imminent. It's coming here, and it's already here. It's in Boston. It's in New York City. I heard it's even in Middleton. But before we really unroll it or roll it out in New York State, um, I think the state needs to look at some of the impact of 5G. I have a resident in the village of Montgomery, the squares, that will kill us just, you know, by standing next to them. So um, that's all I'm asking with this resolution. I know we're not going to um, uh, disallow 5G in Orange County. It's just not going to happen. I know the city of Santa Barbara. I know Mike Blamo is familiar with Santa Barbara. I guess the mayor there and the board uh, passed a resolution not allowing 5G. And there's a couple other examples, but there aren't really many. But, but, I mean, 5G... You know, on the Fox News art, uh, channel last night, I saw how it's imminent. It's, uh, it's, there's going to be a race between China and the United States on 5G because it's some of the qualities are higher speed, less latency, less interference, and po possibly 5G is 100 times faster than 4G. So you're going to see it in the United States, but let's let's at least re um, ask the state and the federal government. Here we're asking the state research the environmental impacts before we implement it throughout the state. You know, Senator Blumenthal was kind of shocked that he blasted the FTC and the FDA for no research. And I watched the clip, I think um, he sent it out to most of these, a couple of the clips that I saw. I know we had uh, concerns when we built the government center, and I believe it was 4G or um, the type of technology, but we wouldn't be able to operate here today if we didn't have the technology we have. So, um, there's a need for it. The schools are cut, but let's just get this to the environmental impacts. And that's all I'm asking for with this resolution to support those two state um, two stages. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? Leader Amo? None, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Legislator Luan? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Legislator Sutherland? No, thank you. Legislator Tortel? Uh, yes, just one question. I'm looking at the assembly bill. I didn't, uh, just what was included in the packet. It doesn't state here uh, where the funding for the study will become, will come from. Are we putting that back on the onus of the um, cellular companies such as Verizon and, and um, AT&T and the other larger companies? Or is this a study that we will be funding through state government? Okay. Uh, Senator Sutherland, you have that information? I I'm sorry, Jean came in because she couldn't hear me, so I turned my volume up. I didn't quite hear the question, Lori. I'm sorry. And where is the funding? Okay, uh, the question is, yes. The funding from the state to study? Yeah, funding for the study. Are we putting this back on to the onus of the uh, cellular companies, or is this supposed to be an independent state study funded by state dollars? Well, I would hope that it's put back on I couldn't cellular quite companies. I couldn't quite if you want to add that in the in the um, one of the whereases, I have no problem with that. I mean, I think it should be funded by the cellular companies. Absolutely, it shouldn't be funded. Yes, by the I would, that's what I would just. And, and you know, Absolutely. the regulatory the agencies. agencies add that in as. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Because Jean said she yeah. couldn't hear me. Okay. I know, like Lawrence. No, I can hear you. My seat. He was so loud. He was yelling from the other end of that table. But, uh, but yeah, Lori. I mean, if. if you know, I'm open to any um, any tweaks to this and massages to this resolution. It's, I mean, it's pretty clear. Yeah. No, I definitely. I, it's going to benefit yeah, I think the, it's a great the technology idea, I think we should more put, than anybody. So. Yeah, yeah, I think we should put the onus of the responsibility of the cost of the study, but if we should be done by an independent monitor, if we could put that as a whereas in there. And I'd like to be a sponsor on this. Okay. I have no problem good. with that, Chairman. Very good. All right, Legislator Tui. No, thank you, Chairman. Leader Benelli. Any other legislators? All right, so. Mr. Chairman, it's Katie. I'm I'm sorry, I couldn't get my mute to work. So um, I, I don't have any questions at this time. 
Uh, but uh, we are asking for a study, and I think that is more than appropriate. So I think everything was pretty well explained. But thank you for thank your time. You. Thank you. So with the addition of the new whereas, thanks to Legislator Tortell, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Terry. So uh, we'll get that new whereas in there, and uh, we'll be voting on this Thursday, Chairman? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank no, you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know if we're voting on this on Thursday. No, that's the special meeting. No, we'll be voting so on it'll Thursday. be it'll be right. June's meeting. Let me yes, just ask a question, Lori. You voted against you you voted against the resolution, Lori. She sponsored. No. She sponsored it. No, no. I, I thought, I thought I heard who, 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 who voted no. He said I. Okay. Did somebody vote no, Chairman? I'm sorry. No, I didn't hear any no. no. Oh, good. Okay. Sorry. It was unanimous. Good. Thank you. All right. Uh, number three, resolution of the Orange County Legislature designating June 21st through June 27th, 2020 as Helen Keller Deaf Blind Awareness Week. I'm assuming that everyone wants to be a sponsor for this resolution. Right, so. Yes. Right. I'll just read a, a couple of... Uh, the paragraphs on the resolution, all right? Whereas Helen Keller was an American lecturer, author, and activist, whereas deaf blindness is a very severe disability, and whereas it is highly appropriate and necessary to publicize the abilities and potential of our fellow citizens who are deaf blind or severely vision and hearing impaired, and to recognize Helen Keller as a guiding example of courage, hope, determination, and achievement, for other individuals who are deaf blind. So, any questions on this, Leader Amo? No questions, Mr. Chairman. Legislator Luan? No question, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Legislator Sutherland? No, thank you, Chairman. Legislator Tortell? Legislator Tui, Chairman Brescia. No question. Okay. Leader Benelli. No, thank Any you, other Mr. legislators? No All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Carried unanimously, and this will also be in the June meeting. Yes. Okay, so uh, is Darcy with us, Doreen? Yes, Legislator O'Donnell, I'm on the line. Okay, Darcy, there you are, Commissioner. All right. Um, so everybody got the uh, mental health updates. Plus, if you were on a previous uh, committee meeting, Darcy uh, gave an update on mental health. Uh, I want to thank Legislator Fasassi for stealing all my uh, material and getting out of here early. But um, so if, if anyone has any questions for Darcy or you want to just give us uh, a, a brief uh, update again, and then we'll go through uh, any questions for you. Sure. So, so my, my biggest update would be the 311. Thank you all for your support and making that happen. The Mental Health Association has been incredible. They're like weeks away from being able to answer the national suicide hotline calls here in Orange County, which is the first time we've been able to answer our own calls ever. So we thank them for their great work. As you can imagine, this pandemic has brought out anxiety in people who might have never experienced anxiety and increased the symptomology for those who were struggling to begin with. So we really appreciate the essential workers that are out there. Our um, crisis response team is out in the field. They're working closer than ever with law enforcement who prevents them from having to go out in the field sometimes. So they're making the calls in and we'll be able to make the decisions telephonically to have people transported to the hospital for evaluation. So appreciate the partnerships of many that are making this happen. Those of you who heard me in the last call, uh, telephonic and telehealth services have really brought up the show rates. Um, so typically we struggle with about 30 to 
35% no-show rates. People are picking up the phone, they're participating in their treatment, and we're gaining a better access to services using those modalities. Um, we anticipate long after um, this, this uh, traumatic experience that we'll still be able to use those modes of intervention to engage people in service. And it's dependent on really the state and federal government to support that moving forward. So that's our intention. Our uh, overdoses for opioids are almost neck and neck with what happened last year. Uh, we are continuing to send out the message of support for services. Uh, we have Narcan trainings that are happening virtually. Dr. Gelman has partnered with us and has signed off so that she can prescribe Narcan for some of the trainings that we're doing. In the midst of this pandemic, she's also getting other things accomplished. So we couldn't do it without the team. And I thank all of my staff and all of our partners that are making this work happen across the county. Any questions? Oh, I think you're muted. There you go. Leader Amo, any questions? No questions. I asked them at the previous meeting, Mr. Chairman. Sassy owes me, so. <laughs> Legislator Luan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do have uh, just uh, one quick question. Uh, firstly, you're, everything that you're doing is absolutely fantastic, and we really, really are grateful for all the hard work of all of your staff and you, obviously. Um, I had a question in regards to um, materials like masks and, um, and, and, and antibacterial and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of people, for example, in our community, um, that lower income, particularly individuals who have mental health issues, substance abuse, um, who still require masks and who are looking for hand sanitizer. Um, where where do you have some locations that you would recommend that they would go? Do you have have you been able to get a stockpile um, that you are, are able to distribute um, to individuals who need it? Yeah, the the New York State Office of Mental Health actually sent a supply to the EOC. Um, I picked up three thousand masks and four boxes of hand sanitizer yesterday, just for our Orange County Clinic clients. So we put a message out to all of our providers saying any of your clients. It was specific to go out on the streets to be in the hands of people who are receiving mental health services. Also, the Office of Temporary Disability Assistance sent for those who are homeless. And I know that that was a big pickup last Friday. So we do have materials that are available. If you know of agencies that are able to distribute to people who are receiving mental health, substance abuse, or homeless services, have them reach out uh, to myself directly, and I'll pass it on to the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, Brendan Casey, Alan Mack, Kathy Barnett from the Department of Health have all been incredible in responding to our requests across the community. Uh, a follow-up question. What about uh, for other legislators, for instance, who I know that we were able to get some, some masks, all legislators were able to get 500 each, but do you have enough that you might be able to help distribute so that we could be able to help distribute for uh, on your behalf if we so choose to? I can follow up with the Emergency Operations Center. Again, they're, they're managing all the PPEs, and when they come in from the state, even when they're for specific offices, they're all going to the EOC. So they have a better handle on what the total numbers are of what they have. But if you are looking for additional masks, I would definitely follow up for you and, and see if they have some masks available from the supplies that came in through my uh, state departments. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Sure. Thank you for all you're doing. Legislator Sutherland. No question. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to say to Darcy, I know um, with my own students during this, you know, remote learning time, how it just absolutely excruciating it has been for, for them and for some of the families that I work with and how the, um, the crisis hotline and 311 your workers, I mean, they're working around, the, they work around the clock anyway, but I mean, I'm talking to workers on Saturday evening, Sunday mornings. Um, it's, it's really shown um, how much um, your department, really the, the men and women care about um, the individuals, our constituents out there. So thank you so much for everything you continue to do. Yeah, thank you. I think it's so important to spread the message. You know, now that we have the 311 to put it out there, I mentioned in the last legislative committee, we were adding a message to the text for teen line, which is the 845-391-1000, to, to just uh, let them know they can use that if they have safety concerns as well. We want to be sure that our youth are, are safe in their homes. Um, you know, 
Our, our parents are, um, are expected to be there as amazing role models and caregivers, but 24 seven with your children <laughs> takes them to a whole nother level. We wanna be sure everybody has the supports they need to keep their home free of violence. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Legislator Tortell. No, just thank you, Darcy, and all of our essential workers and emergency services who are really knocking it out of the park and, and response to this pandemic. Yeah, Legislator Tui. No, just want to uh, echo that. Thank you, Commissioner. We're still Chairman. working on getting the satellite from Monroe Woodbury. Oh, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> we, have, we have to have school for that, you know. We're just trying to get all of our lawyers to agree. Good. That's the hard part. Yeah. Chairman Brescia. No, I'll just echo the echoes. Great job by the mental health department. Thank Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Great job, Darcy and your and your crew. Uh, I wouldn't expect any less from all of you. You have always risen to the challenge. Thank you. Legislator Benton. Legislator Cheney. Legislator Fagione. Chairman, no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Legislator Hines. Legislator Stagenga. Legislator Vero. Um, sorry, no question. Is just thanks for everything you're doing there, Darcy. Thank you. Go ahead, Kathy. Um, I. I just wanted to ask the commissioner one question. Have we seen any type of um, major influx of calls as far as um, any type of abuse, violence, or um, like something that would be significant for what we're going through in calls and, and reports? No, our concern is we've seen a reduction in our calls. So, you know, the gatekeepers, the eyes and, and ears that are, are out there uh, responding to the needs and particularly of our children uh, they're not gaining access to our children. So that's why we want to be sure that we have put in the hands of children and put the message out to our community. I know the county executive is included in it as COVID updates. And we work together with Fearless to send out a joint message across the county. Um, you know, it's important when you don't have the same gatekeepers that they have additional people who have eyes on and are monitoring for safety. Okay, thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that. Any other legislators that joined us late? Okay, thank you, Commissioner Darcy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Doreen, anyone here from the Health Department? No. Okay, so everybody uh, got a copy of their update dated May 19th. All right, I was sent out. I'll just compare it to uh, April 17th's uh, update. All right, so paragraph one on May 19th is the same as April 17th. Paragraph two is the same as April 17th. Paragraph three is new, I'll read that, as our department starts moving into summer operations, permitted facilities like children's camps, campgrounds, mobile food services, and public gatherings, street fairs, et cetera, have become an area of uncertainty. We are working with the New York State Department of Health on when or if some of these operations will be allowed this season. Paragraph four is the same as April. Paragraph five is the same as April. Paragraph six is new coordination with nursing homes and the administration to help them comply with the governor's executive orders on testing staff and residents has been ongoing. Paragraph seven, same as April. Paragraph eight, instead of working seven days in April, uh, the staff is down to uh, six days a week. Also, they have a large push of data that was sent to the department about a month ago, has been entered, and the team is currently up to date with current lab results and reporting. This could not have been done without the support of multiple other departments and their staff who were trained by our department to do this type of work. We have currently scaled down on the number of staff from other departments 
that we need to use, but may reactivate them if needed. And the last paragraph, paragraph number nine is new. The department is now working with leadership in the cities of Middletown and Newburgh. I suspect I'll hear from legislator Fagion, because it doesn't mention Port Jervis, to conduct door-to-door -door outreach with residents and businesses. This outreach campaign will address COVID-19 safety in which educational materials and PPE can be distributed in areas of those cities which have shown increased positive cases. So there's one, two, three, four out of the nine paragraphs are new. If you have any questions, I'm sure you'll be able to get all the Commissioner Gelman if she decides to uh, give you that answer. All right. Um, I do have uh, another resolution I'm working on uh, with uh, regards to the nursing homes in the state. Uh, I'll be calling on uh, an independent investigation of nursing homes throughout the state. Uh, the New York Attorney General is uh, in the process of conducting her own. I'm sure she'll do a great job and be very helpful, but this is a bipartisan uh, issue. Uh, there's a couple of articles in the paper. I'll just read one uh, brief article uh, that quoted uh, Democratic Assemblyman Richard Gottfried from Manhattan. And here's his quote. It's fine to have the health department and the attorney general looking at what individual nursing homes are doing, but there needs to be a professional review of not only the industry as a whole, but what the Department of Health has been doing both leading up to this situation and in the midst of this situation, said Assemblyman Richard Godfrey. Quote, certainly it would be wrong for the Department of Health to be charged with examining itself. The article goes on. But like I said, this is a bipartisan issue. Uh, in New York alone, we have over 5,000 deaths in nursing homes. So I'll be bringing this resolution to the floor. I know the last resolution uh, was 17, three abstentions, one against, and that called for just to reverse that insane policy of putting infected patients into Valley View. So thank God, Clear Ahead's finally uh, uh, woke up in Albany and they reversed that. Although when asked by the press if this was a reversal, they said, no, this is a new policy. It was a reversal. Please get the politics out of COVID-19. People are dying. We need to do more and we need to do it now. So I'll be bringing this resolution by consent. All right. Uh, I'm sorry uh, to the committee that uh, no one from the health department is here to answer your questions in person. But I do want to uh, bring this up to uh, uh, the Independence Party members that are here and the Democratic Party members that are here. Because it got brought up uh, last night uh, that the health department is looking for a new building. How they think it's appropriate to ask for a new building in the middle of this crisis is insane as well. They should be concentrating on one thing only, saving lives. If anybody has anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Chairman, before you adjourn. Go ahead, Chairman. Oh, did I not? Chairman, um, you're going to bring this resolution for Thursday's meeting or, or June's? I'll wait till June. That's fine. I, I'll do it okay. Thursday if I can. I mean, the, the sooner the better. I mean, I don't have I'll a problem bring. if you bring it on Thursday. All right, the I'll bring. notice already went out. This is Antoinette Reed. The notice for the special meeting already went out. So uh, it's a little too late to add it to that agenda. So it would be for June 4th. All right. Okay. Thanks, Antoinette. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Okay. Good. We'll discuss it further. And um, I just have to say I concur with you. I mean, we've done such a crappy job compared to, you know, Texas and Florida with the nursing homes. I mean, underutilized Naval ship, Javit Center, the list goes on. And and uh, we really need to do a lot better job in New York State. And I commend you, Chairman, for bringing this forward. Yeah, we need an independent look at this. So if something like this happens again, God forbid, but we'd be in a lot better shape going into it. Mm -hmm. All right.
Fox. Any other comments? Chairman, Tom Fangio. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just in regards to the city of Fort Jervis, I would like to commend the leadership of our city council and the mayor of doing a good job of keeping the citizens informed. And we're very blessed and grateful that our numbers in Fort Jervis are very low. So in regards to the health department reaching to Middletown and Newburgh, I understand that they have crisis there, as the numbers indicate. But uh, in the city of Fort Jervis, the citizens, thankfully, are, uh, are hitting the marks in good ways in terms of staying healthy as possible. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Legislator Fadion. Anyone else? Motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Thank, thank you all. Have a great evening. You too. You too. Thank you, Chairman.